Superman Legacy is an upcoming DC Studios movie releasing in July 2025, written and possibly directed by James Gunn, that will be the first movie in the new DC movie universe. There's a lot of hype and a lot of conversation surrounding this movie because it's incredibly important for the future of DC. One such topic of conversation is who will be the main villain, and while I wouldn't say it's the most important part of the movie, it's definitely up there and will 100% influence what the movie will look like. In this video, I'll be going over every potential candidate for who I think will be the main villain of Superman Legacy, based on the admittedly limited amount of knowledge we have about the movie, however there are some clear hints, and then by the end of the video I'll make an actual prediction for who I think the main villain will be. The hints towards the main villain might be, or rather, a better way of saying that is, the criteria that allows a villain to be considered for this video are, either they were the villain in the story that this movie is taking inspiration from, or they were hinted at by James Gunn on social media or interviews, which he does a lot, and has given us a couple Superman villains. And finally, for the likelihood of that character being the villain of this movie, we have to look at, well, first of all, the strength of James Gunn's hints, but then also just what makes the most sense in the context of the movie, also what came before, and then what the movie needs to accomplish, which is to be, first of all, the definitive beginning of this universe, but also, more importantly for this video, bringing Superman's reputation in the general audience's eye back for good. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and let's begin with the first candidate. The first candidate is one that's been talked about a lot, but at this point I think is very unlikely, and that's Manchester Black and the Elite. For those of you who don't know, the Elite are a group of super-powered vigilantes who dish out much more hardcore form of justice than the DC Universe heroes are used to, which brings them into conflict with Superman. The reason they have been talked about as a potential villain for Superman Legacy, from before Superman Legacy was even announced, they were just always talked about as a good villain for a Superman movie, is because they would honestly be perfect. The story they originate from, which is called What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, as well as its animated adaptation, Superman vs. the Elite, is one of the best Superman stories of all time that conveys better than almost any other story the qualities that make Superman such a great character that honestly general audiences just don't get. It does this by having Superman show the elite the error of their ways by tricking them into thinking that Superman has become like them and is dishing out to them the same form of justice they did to others, which shows them how terrifying that is. And I love this story, I love the animated movie, and while the story is short and would definitely need a lot of expanding upon, I do think and have said before that the basis for the story would be perfect for a new Superman movie that conveys to audiences how great Superman is and how his more earnest and wholesome approach to heroics has its merit, and then Manchester Black and the Elite would be the perfect villains for that movie. And there has been hints and even evidence to back up that they might be considered to be used for this movie. There was a quote from James Gunn that seems like a direct reference to this story, with Gunn describing Superman in Superman Legacy as, quote, He's the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way. He's kindness in a world that thinks of kindness as old-fashioned, unquote. And there was even an article that James Gunn liked about the new DC slate and what it should look like. This was prior to the announcements, which included a second Superman movie where the elite are the main villains. All that being said, however, I think because of the Chapter 1 announcements, the elite being used as the main villain or honestly appearing ever in this universe seems very unlikely and would honestly be completely redundant. The authority in the comics and how they are being described in this movie is exactly what the elite is, and that's no coincidence. The elite and their story were created in response to and are directly based off of the authority, which at the time were not a part of the DC universe, they were completely separate, they were through Wildstorm, which was published through DC, but it is their own universe, at least it was, now that the Authority are getting their own movie as a part of this universe, it just wouldn't make any sense to bring in the Elite, which is like the exact same team, they're just too similar. Instead what I think they're doing is, a potential sequel to Superman Legacy might actually also be a sequel to the Authority, and they might be substituting the Elite for the Authority in a movie maybe called Superman vs. the Authority, just because the Authority and what they stand for, they clash too much with Superman for their 
there not to be any conflict there. So, while the Authority would have been perfect villains for Superman Legacy, and a return to form for a Superman movie, it no longer seems all that likely, and would just be all that too redundant and all that too similar to another movie in this universe. Another potential candidate is somebody we've seen many, many times before, Lex Luthor. The comic that is being cited as the main inspiration for Superman Legacy and is, for now, being used as the visual representation of the movie, before it gets any concept art or official images, is All-Star Superman, of which the main villain is Lex Luthor. Now just for transparency's sake, All-Star Superman is not being touted as the basis for the story of Superman Legacy, as that just wouldn't make any sense. It's about a veteran Superman who dies at the end, or basically dies. Instead, Gunn said All-Star Superman, alongside the comic inspirations for Brave and the Bold, The Authority, and Swamp Thing, will have tonal, feeling, and visual influences on their respective films. All that is to say that just because All-Star Superman is the comic inspiration doesn't mean its main villain will be the main villain of Superman Legacy, but it doesn't not mean that either. Lex Luthor, alongside General Zod, have taken up practically all the Superman movie villain spots that other villains have been left out of. I mean, Brainiac, Bizarro, Metallo, Parasite, Mongol, the aforementioned The Elite. Superman has a lot of great villains, but the movies have fallen back on Lex Luthor and General Zod almost every time, making Superman's rogues gallery look not very good. So on one hand, I'd much, much rather let a different Superman villain get some love, but also on another hand, yeah sure, Luthor has been used many, many times, but has he ever been done well? This might be a slightly controversial opinion, so brace yourselves, I honestly do not think Lex Luthor has ever been done well in a live action movie. I don't think anybody's jumping to defend Jesse Eisenberg or even Kevin Spacey, but I am aware that Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor has its fans. I just don't think he's a good Luthor. He's never really shown to be bald. I mean, he is bald, but he wears a wig most of the time. He's not very smart and is used to comedic effect most of the time. He doesn't really have a personal vendetta against Superman. He's just doing evil shit and Superman stops evil shit. He might be an entertaining or maybe even compelling villain for some, but he's just not Lex Luthor, or at the very least doesn't hold up to the standard of what a good modern interpretation of Lex Luthor is. So while I would love to see a different villain given the spotlight, I don't think I'd be incredibly disappointed or anything if Lex does end up being the main villain because I would love to see him done well for the first time on the big screen. Although the words big screen are key because over on live action TV, he has been done well twice already with another appearance coming in Superman and Lois, which is generally a pretty good show. So it's not like he's never been done well in live action. It's just live action movies. Now it admittedly none of that really speaks to the likelihood of Luthor being the villain, but I feel like Luthor has a high likelihood of being the villain of every Superman movie just by default, and that's slightly amplified by All-Star Superman having an influence on the movie, plus the fact that Legacy will follow a younger Superman as a reporter in Metropolis in a more simple, bare-bones Superman story, Lex Luthor does fit that mold beautifully. I think that he is honestly very likely to be the main villain, but not the most likely villain. I'll get to him soon. And then there's Brainiac, easily the most popular choice for villain in this movie, and easily the most important Superman villain who has never been used in a movie before, as he's been brutally sidelined in favor of the likes of Lex Luthor almost every time, General Zod twice, Doomsday once, and I guess Nuclear Man in uh, Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. I would absolutely love to see Brainiac as the main villain of this, or any future Superman or even Justice League movie. There's just so much untapped potential with this character who's brimming with possibility. Initially, Superman seemed very likely for a few reasons, beyond the fact that he's been sidelined for too long, but lately, evidence has pointed to him not only not appearing in Superman Legacy, but the entirety of Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters. The reason why he seemed likely is that Brainiac has been attempted to be brought to the big screen multiple times, but none of these attempts ever came to fruition. There was Superman Reborn, which would have had Brainiac as the main villain, Superman Lives, which was a rewriting of Reborn, which kept its main villain, Brainiac, and much, much more recently, Man of Steel 2, the long-awaited confirmed and then cancelled sequel to Man of Steel, twice, would have featured Brainiac as the main villain as well, so Brainiac has come close to being the villain in movies before and just seems to be the go-to for a lot of scripts and pitches for Superman movies, even if they don't end up being made. 
On top of that, the description of Superman Legacy from an interview with James Gunn and Peter Safran does potentially point to Brainiac. In the interview, Peter Safran describes the movie as this. It focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. The Kryptonian heritage part sounds like it probably comes into play in the central plot of the movie, which will probably come out due to the central conflict of the movie as well, which the villain that fits that the most is... It's General Zod, but there's no way in hell they're going down that route again, starting off yet another DC Universe with a Superman movie where they fight General Zod. That would be stupid and ridiculous, and you'd have so much of that Snyder is the blueprint nonsense, they would lose their minds. But, I think second place for that is Brainiac, who in some interpretations of Superman's origin is a direct causality of the destruction of Krypton, and in every other interpretation, has immense knowledge of Krypton and is seeking more through Superman. It may in fact be the case that the movie will focus on Clark learning about Krypton and his true heritage because of Brainiac. A lot of central aspects of Superman's mythos, which may not make sense, can be very easily explained through Brainiac. There is obviously the shrunken city of Kandor, which he is typically responsible for anyway. He could also bring remnants of Krypton, including what would then become known as Kryptonite, and maybe even the Fortress of Solitude, and he might have even been responsible for Kara not reaching Earth if they don't want to go the Phantom Zone route that they did on the TV show, and then he kept her in stasis for him to study. Brainiac just fits so perfectly with the concept of Clark learning about or expanding his knowledge on his true heritage, and Brainiac simply needs to be given some love on the big screen because it's insane that he never has. Unfortunately, he may very well be skipped again, as the whole reason he's being included in this video is a hint from James Gunn, he does fit that criteria, but that very hint does kind of confirm that he is not appearing in this chapter. I talked about this more in depth in a previous video, but essentially IGN did a poll asking people who they'd like to see in the DCU, and Brainiac made it all the way to top 4 on the list, so clearly there's a high demand for him to be featured as the villain of Superman Legacy. James Gunn responded to the top 10 list by asking will 5 of 10 do, confirming only 5 of these 10 characters will be appearing in chapter 1. Then, based on Elseworlds projects they may potentially appear in or have been confirmed to be appearing in, I immediately eliminated Mr. Freeze, the Court of Owls, and Constantine. Then, out of the 7 remaining characters, the 2 who have been hinted at the least, and in fact have never been hinted at, are Zatanna and Brainiac, and this does not seem to be a stretch either. Nightwing has basically been confirmed, Martian Manhunter's been hinted at twice, Lobo's been hinted at many many times, with Jason Momoa basically being confirmed to play him, Deathstroke's been hinted at with some very tongue-in-cheek hints twice now, and Jason's been hinted at once, but Damien being Robin just implies his existence anyway. So, unless one of these characters doesn't end up appearing in Chapter 1, or maybe, maybe Lobo will be Elseworlds due to a conflict with Jason Momoa playing Aquaman, it does seem like Brainiac and also Zatanna will not be included in this chapter, so Brainiac will be skipped over yet again. So this brings us to one final category, the category of Superman villains who are the ones who have been directly hinted at by James Gunn, who like I said earlier loves to hint at DC characters who may or may not appear in the DCU. Some hints are definitely stronger than others, and some of them blatantly unofficially confirm said character will be appearing. The Superman villains who have been hinted at include... Bloodsport, who Gunn has and will probably continue to use as a Suicide Squad character, not a Superman villain, so I do not think he's likely at all to be the main villain or even appear in this movie. There's also Lobo, who's been hinted at probably more so than any other Superman villain, and I think he has a very high likelihood of appearing in the movie, but he just isn't main villain material. If anything, he has more potential than that, as he could be the main character in his own project. There's also Darkseid, who has the opposite problem of Lobo. He's barely been hinted at, although he has been, but he has too much main villain potential. He's not going to be the main villain of the first Superman movie. If anything, he's going to be the main villain of the entire chapter. Not a Superman movie, not the first Superman movie, Movie, that's for sure. 
and finally our two gorilla villains who were hinted at alongside most of the gorillas in the DC universe. There's Titano, who's also not main villain potential, and he might be like a side villain or something, he might appear for a couple minutes, he does not have main villain potential, but the Ultra Humanite does. The Ultra Humanite was the very first supervillain that Superman faced off against and was his arch enemy for like a year or so before Lex Luthor then showed up and took over and has been ever since. The Ultra Humanite is best known for transferring his mind from body to body, including that of actress Dolores Winters and that of a white gorilla, which is his most famous form. The hint towards the Ultra Humanite isn't that direct since it came with many more gorillas, but James Gunn did seem very adamant about bringing all these gorillas, or at least some of them, into the DCU. In fact, he's already brought one of them that he mentioned in, in Peacemaker, that being Charlie, and the Ultra Humanite would actually make a lot of sense to be brought in as the main villain of Superman Legacy, because the actual real-life DC Universe began, kind of, with Superman facing off against the Ultra Humanites, and I don't know, they might want to be doing that again. Also, there's no denying that as a CGI gorilla and a bit of a wackier and more obscure character, he's absolutely right up James Gunn's alley, and as a Superman villain who's never been used in a Superman movie before, I would definitely like them to go down this route and use the Ultra Humanite as the main villain of Superman Legacy. That being said, the Ultra Humanite has over the years become more of a JSA villain and even appeared very recently on Stargirl, but also he appeared less recently on Justice League Unlimited as an enemy of the Justice League. He's also the only hinted at Superman villain who has main villain potential, hasn't been used before, and isn't the exact same as another team who's getting their own movie. So I think out of all of these villains, He's honestly not only the most likely, but the one I would like to see the most, aside from Brainiac, but Brainiac just doesn't seem very likely at this point. So with all the candidates out of the way, here's everyone who I think can potentially or has been hinted at to be the main villain of this movie, and how likely I think they are to be the main villain based on all the facts and honestly speculation I just presented. The least likely is Darkseid. He's far too big a villain to be the first villain in a Superman series. Like I said, I think he's going to be either the main villain of the first chapter, maybe the second chapter, definitely not a Superman movie, and certainly not the first one. Then there's Bloodsport, who's not really main villain material, he's too much of a Suicide Squad character and too much of a DCEU character to be the main villain in the first DCU movie. Then there's Titano, who is a main villain material, there's Lobo, who is a main villain material but has been hinted at more, then Manchester Black and the Elite, who would work very well and have been hinted at, but they're just too similar to the Authority. In third place, the third most likely is Brainiac, who would work very well, but evidence does seem to point to him not appearing in the DCU, but who knows, there might be a twist, and one of those other five characters, like, let's say, Lobo, isn't appearing in this universe, but is getting Elseworld, so Brainiac still might appear, but it is seeming to be less likely. The second most likely is Lex Luthor. He would work well, but has been used too many times before, so let's give other villains a chance, including the Ultra Humanite, who just fits all of the boxes. He would work well, he's never been used before, he is main villain material he's been hinted at, and there's just no denying that he's right up James Gunn's alley. So there's my prediction. I think the Ultra Humanite will be the main villain of this movie, although Lex Luthor is probably just as likely I'd prefer someone else, and the villain I'd like to see the most is Brainiac, but again, he just doesn't seem to be likely anymore. So there it is, the Ultra Humanites, but let me know what you guys think. Who do you think is going to be the main villain of Superman Legacy? Would you like it to be Ultra Humanite, Lex Luthor, Brainiac, the Elite, anybody? Maybe somebody who I didn't even mention, like Metallo, Mongol, or Parasite? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you like this video, bye.